I'm Chris Trott from Team TaylorMade. These two guys do not need an introduction, but I'm gonna give it you. It's Rory McIlroy, Dustin Johnson, and this, I need you all to take cover because it's the attack zone. Okay, fellas, we are out here at 111 yards. Dustin, in the game of football, 20 yards and in is the red zone, right? Yep. You, you educate me. I'm well, not even going to ask my man. I know he I knows. have no idea what you're talking <laughs> really? about. Really? No. That's the scoring zone. Same deal in golf. Obviously, this is the scoring zone. Talk us through, boys, and feel free to start striking up there, hit some shots. But talk us through what you're doing, and we'll have a little competition, see who can hit it closer, what yeah, the I score mean, can be. But scoring clubs is, what, nine iron down, kind of? Maybe yeah, wedge, I mean, wedges. One, one, 150 in. Yeah, so pretty much any wedge in your bag is definitely a scoring club. You know, we would probably go to you know, nine iron, maybe eight iron would be kind of your scoring clubs. But, okay. Yeah. Um, but yeah, wedges for sure. So, so what clubs are you holding here for this shot? I've got a sand wedge. Me too, 54 yeah, for me. Yeah, I've got the same, 54. Okay. We'll hit some in there, show us what yep. you've got. Cool. But yeah, definitely from here is definitely the attack zone. We're pretty much, no matter where the flag is, we're, we're going at it. Okay. We're trying to hit it close. So what's the thinking on this one? Down, breeze a little off so the left. So going off the left, um, I have like a little, like my shortest swing with my 54 goes 105. So I'm sort of trying to play that, maybe just a touch over that swing, just with it being a little bit of help. And that should be a that should be a good distance. Yep. So same with me. Actually, my my half 54 goes 105. Okay. So that's my okay. the shortest I. Uh, you know, for shots that I have. And a half 54 with feel or a half with like a club face position? Pretty impressive. What? Half with it, is it feel for the half 54? <laughs> yeah, so it's not really like, I don't know how far back it goes. I just know it's my, I call it my half swing. Yeah. You know, and it's more just take it back and then kind of accelerate it through. So there is a certain position that I stop, but where that is, I'm not really sure. worried about. I, I practice it enough on the range that you know yeah for me it's when i feel like my left my left shoulder hits my chin that's when it's time to start transition again. and then uh so that, it's probably really similar for myself i just don't think it think about it like yeah. that but rory you had a high bounce wedge yesterday same deal on this club yep yeah high bounce 54. talk to us about that what's that giving you out of this turf and what do you think it gives you on a full shot yeah so for me I've never, you know, you know, we grew up in the same place where we short. played a lot of Lynx golf and I never thought about using different bounces because I never felt like I needed it. We played yeah. off tight turf and, you know, usually when you have that, you, you use a low bounce wedge. Yeah. Um, but, you know, the, the majority of the golf we play now is Bermuda or Bent or, you know, we play Lynx golf once a year. So uh, tried a high bounce wedge and really liked it i liked that it. it didn't dig as much it got out of the turf a little quicker felt like the ball flight came down a lot which is you know when you can control your trajectory on your wedges it means that you can control your distance better and spin um, and spin um so that yeah that's sort of that that's been the big thing with me is this high bounce I, I never really tried one before and you know i've tried it the last few weeks and i really liked it i mean i feel like too for well especially with wedges 60 50, you know, your sand wedge, your pitching wedge, hitting good shots and getting it close to the hole, is, it's all about controlling the spin. So knowing how much it's going to spin, you know, that sort of thing, that's how you get it close to the hole. So, but you do that with the flight, obviously, you know, the lower you flight it, it's not going to necessarily spin back as much or okay. it might at least get that hop forward so it doesn't And then I feel. think as well, one of the reasons that DJ and I are using our 50, like we could both get our lob wedges to this pin, but they're just going to spin off yeah. the green. So controlling so the controlling spin, controlling and that brings spin. in golf ball, right? Yeah. You're both using yep. X's? Yep. Yes. What's the, is this, does that come in for decision on this? Yeah, I mean, if anything, you know, we're, we're trying to, we're trying to take spin, we're trying to take spin off like yeah. the wedges, you know, just so like it sort of hits and sort of stays where it lands. So yeah, I mean, using the TP5X, it just has that little less spin, which helps.
How much time would you both spend on this area of your game? I've started to spend a lot more. Um, so if you think about it, with, you know, we're both two of the longer players on tour. Every two tournaments, basically, that we play, we're going to have 100 shots from inside 150 yards. So when you th or at least close to between 80 and 100. So when you think about it like that, that's you know, that's a lot of scoring opportunities. So that it should make up a big part of our game because if we drive it well, we're just going to get so many chances at the, at this distance. For me, I spend 70% of my practice probably with wedges. You're maybe, a big maybe more. I mean, if you count chipping and putting, I've probably like more like 85%. Yeah. You're a big one on the look of the wedge, right? Yeah, well, it's with anything. I mean, if it doesn't look good to you, it's going to be really hard to hit a good shot. I mean, for I mean, especially for myself cuz I'm a big feel player. So, if I don't feel like I'm going to hit a good shot, I've got no chance. Yeah. And I see you both obviously cleaning that raw face over and over. I think that's probably well, something that's overlooked as well by amateurs. Well, for me, I don't ever hit a golf shot on the course with the club dirty. So why would I ever practice with it dirty? Yeah. I know it's it takes a little bit more time because yeah. you got to wipe your club off, but I like to practice how I'm going to play. Yeah. So yeah, I'm, I'm never going to pull a dirty club out and hit it on the golf course. So yeah. why would I hit dirty ones on the range? Yeah. And then what That's about these raw faces, Rory? I mean, you've been into them now for a while. Yeah. What's that giving you as a player? I think like obviously it means that you're going to get a little more spin but i think it's more the it's more the consistency that the ball is going to come out with the same launch and the same spin every time it's more consistency rather than wanting as much spin as possible it's just making sure that the ball comes out the same way every single time yeah. well, i think that's the that's the thing i would imagine you're fairly similar to me like we're like my 60 degree i want that to spin as much as possible this, you know, once I get, you know, with the sand wedge and you know, I don't want it to have a ton of spin. Obviously, you want some spin, but like the 60, I switch that, you know, every couple weeks because I really want it to grip. But like where my sand wedge, I'll play it for, you know, a couple few months probably um, just because, you know, I don't want it ripping back as much as yeah. like I do want my 60 to have spin, though. Yeah, I probably changed my lob wedge like between six and eight times a year. And I'd maybe use two sand wedges a year and two pitching wedges. Yeah. Uh, because the thing as well is you're, you know, you're hitting bunker shots more with a lob wedge. And then, you know, the, that raw face that you're talking about, that just gets worn down the more yeah. you practice and the more bunker shots you hit. And right. so, so, so I, you want to try to keep that as fresh as possible. But I do, because that's always the club in my bag I want to spin. Yeah. You know, because you don't, you know, unless we're playing firm, really, you know, fir really firm greens, you know, we're not hitting full lob wedges very often. Yeah. You know, so that's the thing. It's always like some kind of shot or you're chipping with it or hitting bunkers. Yeah. So that's where you want the spin. Yeah. Where you, we do hit a lot of full sand wedges or pitching wedges. So obviously the raw face has changed a lot over time. So now you've got those raised micro ribs in between. It's new. High bounce, I know, on a full shot gives you a different feel as well. Off speed is where the raised micro ribs meant to make a difference. Are you feeling that versus the previous model? Have you noticed anything? And also, how long is it going to take until one of your boys holds one of these? I feel like, what would you say? You can get a hole out in the next few shots with this amount of balls. Like, when are you? When is that coming in in I this mean, attack zone? I think I think now we know like it's probably you need to land it. So it's a 111 shot, but you actually need to land it beyond that because yeah. the tilt of the green and everything. So. I'd say if you both give, you know, if you give us another 10 balls each, we're going right, to. Well, the well, we're going to scare it. Well, let's every, scare it. By actually holding it. I mean, oh, you don't actually hold very many shots if you think about how many you hit. So. You got a challenge now. I know you like a challenge. Yeah. I mean, I think we're going to, like I said, we're going to scare it. That will good. scare it. Shot. 
Yeah, I mean, the last two I've hit scared it, but Definitely. getting it to actually drop in is a little more difficult. You've closed out a couple of tournaments, haven't you? Certainly one I can think of with a hole out. Yeah, that was a nine iron, though. They've both been good. Sound and the consistency is ridiculous. It's good there. And two, like, if you're watching them, my ball, his ball, they kind of the spins kind of the same every yeah. time. So it makes it, obviously, it's a lot easier to go to different courses. You just yeah. judge how firm the greens are. Obviously, these are a little soft and they're fast, so they're going to spin a lot. But even with the X, it's cool to see you control it. Like that one there that Rory's just hit didn't zip off the front, you know? Wee. Mine just didn't carry far enough, but it didn't have a ton of spin. Yeah, it's controlled. But like hitting this shot, I could sit here and hit this shot all day. It's really good practice and it's fun. And with your practice, do you move around yardages a lot or do you stick on? Yeah. 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 Yeah, you know, I've sort of realized for me, like DJ obviously spends quite a bit of time on TrackMan and does that. Like obviously you need to know your numbers and stuff, but for me, I think the best practice is getting out on the course and hitting, you know, hitting shots yep. and you know having to like, you know, over bunkers and like have definition and play little shots in. That's something that you can't really for replicate sure. on the range. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> my time on the range I spend on the wedges, but I'm always just working on carry distance. And then I play a lot. So kind of the same thing he's talking. You get more, I get better practice on the golf course, but I still spend a lot of time on the range just working on those numbers. So yeah. making sure I'm hitting my numbers and controlling my distance. This one, I think it is. It's clean. It's good, Rory. There we go. This one's gonna have a short, chance maybe. right here. This it's one's got deep. a chance. Oh, Oy. right by it. Let's get it. Yeah. Well, I finally landed one far enough back there. Go the other way, Trotty. Try and play around with it. Little draw. That's nice there. Would you ever do that spin against the slopes? Yeah, for sure. There's another one. Keeps it interesting as well. Yeah, and it's Important. and it's a, you challenge yourself, right? Yeah. Just hitting different shots, different trajectories, different shapes. And two, depending on the flag, where it is, the slope of the green, like, like I'll, I turn, you know, I'll turn my wedges over, or hold it against the wind, you know, just depending on. To spin it a certain way as well on the green. Well, yeah, and just, you know, sometimes it's, it's just easier. And two, when I, if I draw it, it takes a little bit of the spin off, so it's not going to spin as much. So like this shot, you know, knowing this course and the and the greens, you know probably would turn it, especially with this wind, yeah. just to take some of the spin off. Because all my normal stock shots with the high cut is just spinning too, much, too spin. much. So I'd probably take it in a hair lower and a little right to left just to knock some of that spin down. So as a player coming out on tour versus where your wedge play is now, how did you learn and pick up all these things? More by watching the best players or by asking questions? Yeah, I think watching and yeah. like, you know, you we play with so many different players week in, week out that you see what certain guys do well and you see like common denominators. Like I feel like all the best wedge players that I've played with just control their trajectory really well. They, you know, the windows of where they're hitting and they always seem to play the right shot. You know, it, 
So to me, that was a big thing. I needed to learn how to control my trajectory with wedges to become a, a decent player. So how did you player. do that? How did you improve on that? Um, by not hitting full wedges a lot. You know, by sort of trying to take distance off, trying to really regulate the swing and the number. And so I, I, I very rarely, you know, unless it's a front pin and you're going to throw it seven or eight yards past and rip it back, you're never really hitting a full wedge full that wedge, much. Yeah. So there's only a few courses I imagine that demand that a year, like US Open. Yeah, where hard. you'd need to like where throw it way up in the air. Like I said, conditions dictate a lot of it, but yeah. most of the time we're really not going to hit a full wedge. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, full pitching wedge, yes, but full sand wedge and full lob wedge, I just, it's spins Like a full so sand wedge here is actually okay because you can throw yeah. it to the back edge and yeah. rip it back. But it's just very often, you know, unless you have like that perfect number where it's downwind, the conditions are right, where you can hit a full you know, or it's a, you know, you got 120 and your full wedge goes 125 and you know it's going to spin back a little bit. All right, that's a, you know, a perfect situation to hit a full yeah. sand wedge. But, yeah, yeah. But more often than not, you not sit, you never have just your dead stock number. Yep. So you're always trying to find something. Now, yeah. when you don't have your dead stock number, do you take the number that is stock and bring the pace out, or do you go the number that's shorter and try and hit it further, or does that again all depend on green the player conditions? And I think, you know, yeah. I mean, I think it's just the player. But a lot of times, like, say I've got, Shot. I've got 118, and yeah. my three-quarter sand wedge goes 115. I'll make the three-quarter swing and then just put just a hair more into it. Yeah. You know, rather than going full swing and trying to take yeah, a little yeah, bit off. Yeah. So you, you always try and be accelerating. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I wasn't exactly. Both those ones were dirty club face. What's that? 58. <laughs> Can you get that there? Uh, probably, I'll try. So they would, there was mud on the sand, on the face, and it was not spinning as much? Yeah, or? and it launched really high. Okay, so the launch changed, because you couldn't get yeah, this to is, the... Uh, I got to back foot this and hit this as hard as I can to get it there. 60? Yeah. Yeah. It's playing... It's actually playing a lot further. But I think that's there. It's just going to spin. Look at, look at it, though. It's spinning. Landed past the pin, and it's like... Spin them back it's still off got, the green. Still got pretty good yardage out of it. Yeah. Got to hit like a big trap draw to get it there. All right, Trotty, I'm going to start one. Okay. I'm going to start one over hook the... Hook it in there. I'm going to hook one in there. Started at the bunker. How about this for practice, hitting yeah, the... There you go. See, I, for That's this got a shot, chance. Go, go. Oh, that was nice. Oh. For this shot, I would probably use this club. Okay. Yeah, for me. So you got the one option of hooking one in there like he's just demonstrated perfectly for us, which I love. But, you know, cause just because even, even with the sand wedge here, I'm getting... I feel like it's spending too much to control it. Yeah. Especially, too, because behind the flag is even more pitch. So the further back you hit it, it's got more spin. It's actually going to spin even more. Yeah. Because I just landed a couple way past it and spun it off the front. As a result of the hill and the spin, yeah. Right. So I would... So I now would, you're taking spin off, taking right. hill out of so it. So this is my wedge. See, I, yeah, my I've got smallest, a, My smallest swing with a wedge was like 125. So, like, I'm trying to do that. It's going to maybe just take a touch more off that to try to get it to the right number. And so nice. I actually just put really in good. a, I just put in a gap wedge. So I would use my gap wedge here. I got a 50. It's 
See, that's not, I love that flight. But for me, that's I would use, sort of I would use that for. shot because I know I can fly it, you know, right to the hole and it's just going to yeah. stick there. So, Rory, this is a MG3 and not a set wedge. How did you make that decision? Uh, I don't know. I just, I like... I don't know if I feel like I've got a little more control with it or the feels just a little nicer. I think it's like I, I see my pitching wedge as part of the other, like the set of MG3 wedges. I don't, yeah, like I've always thought a pitching wedge is more similar to like a 54 and a, a 60 than it is a nine iron. Yep. So that's why I've always went sort of yep. MG3. I've, I've went back and forth over the years, but yeah, I've always seemed that. to come back to this. So for me, yeah, you're the other way, right? Yeah, I use the pitch and wedge just because it doesn't, it, it definitely doesn't spin as much, but I feel like for me, I could control the spin and trajectory better with it. Yeah. Because again, a pitch and wedge, it's not, I don't want it to peel back. Yeah. Even when I hit a full one, you know, even a full one into, you know, these greens that are soft, it's not going to rip back yeah. for me. And so that's why I like it. And I mean, I don't know. I used to play the the 48 like this. Yeah. Um, you know, just a, a wedge for a while, a long time. And then, I don't know. Tiger doesn't use one. He was, <laughs> when I first got on tour, yeah. you know, my first few years on tour. And he's an unbelievable wedge player. And that's and a good point. Like, how much impact has he had on both of you when it for, comes to scoring clubs? For sure. I mean, that was another one of the reasons. And then once I started using it, I actually liked it more. Mm. Just because I felt like sometimes in the rough, like with my normal wedge, I feel like the ball comes out more better, expect, more consistently, yeah. where yeah. sometimes with a wedge like that, like I'll get one that'll come out with spin or, you know, one that, so it's you know, I just... Shots. Tiger have any impact on you, Rory, when it came to wedge play and just when you got to play with him the first few times or even yeah, now? Yeah, I mean, what? I think it was well documented at the start of his career. He, you know, he used to play, a, you know, he used to hit a lot of wedges at full speed and struggled to control his distance. And, uh, and over the years, he worked on controlling his ball flight, controlling his trajectory. Come on. Um, uh, and he... Uh, and That's he turned. Be. And he turned that into. One, he turned into I a really. Don't know if I couldn't tell, but <laughs> turned into a really, really good wedge player. Yeah, just so, controlling the flight, taking yeah. the speed out, yeah. having positions, doing everything yeah. you've been saying. Yeah, exactly. And divots, to be fair, I know it's here and they explode a bit, but they're not that deep for either of you, right? No, no you try to be sort of, especially with the shorter ones, where the you're taking speed off. You try to not take. But you try um, to, you know, be quite reason shallow. Another upslope, yeah. so the divot's going to be, be a deeper. little bit deeper. And it's still not deep, though. No. That's always the thing with you, Dustin. I always think the sound is a little different when you hit it because you're so shallow. Yeah, I mean, just upslope, though, you're always just going to take a little I bit more. I get that. Yeah. But when I see you hit around the world and I see you yeah. loosen up, I'm like, always sounds a little different. Well, Which is a the good steeper thing. you get, the harder it is to control the distance. Definitely. Because then you're I, changing the 100%. pace angle and you're changing the law. Yeah, I'm saying it, but I love it. Yeah. And two with, you know. Compliment. I'm wedge trying I'm to give him a compliment. I know it's very rare yeah. for me, but I'm trying to give him one. No, no, I, I, I get what you're saying. Thank you. Take that 54 again. Yeah, that does sound a lot different, doesn't it? I always think it does, yeah. but that's just because I observe a lot, and you obviously are in the moment. But yeah, I know, like, on the range, if I'm, if my, you know, clubs getting too, if I'm, my divots are too big or something, you know, obviously I'm not doing something right. And generally, you, yeah. it's because I'm, I'm just hanging on the left side. And, yeah. But divots can tell you a lot about how you're swinging or what you're doing. Definitely. 
running out of balls here. I feel like we almost have seen one go in. This is close too. You're dancing around it. I think some of my closest ones have been the little draws I've hit in there. Sort of went, the, went of the, the other way. <coughs> I've had a couple scare it with the other wedge, but this one I've had. So all my shots with this wedge have been, you know, say around that 10 foot range where yep. they're all makeable birdies, where with the sand wedge, just cause it's spinning it's so much. Zip. Yeah, I hit a couple good ones, but I've hit 10 shots with this and I think I have probably my five closest balls have been with this club. Yeah. Just keeping it close to the hole. When I look at your divot patterns, they're good on the depth, but maybe a little off the left. Is that because you're trying to play the slope? No, I just, all my, my divots, they always go a little left. Just because I, Cause the you way know, you pass. Well, I cut it. Yep. So obviously if I was drawing it, my yep. divot would be a little more straighter at like the flag. That. And then lie angles. I've been with a lot of great players and they will talk about sometimes wanting their wedges to be a little bit flatter. Yeah. Where, where's your two's view on that? Yeah, if anything, I would tend to go flatter just because I would rather that toe grab a little bit. So it and opens. you like the fade. Well, even when I, even when you draw it, you still you don't want that heel to grab because it's dead. Yeah, especially with you a wedge, like, yeah. you just don't want it grabbing. So yeah. you don't come off your set though. You keep grading through your set, right? Yeah, I. So for me. Yeah, I mean, I, if anything, get a little too deep with irons anyway, so I don't want them to be any flatter than what they should be. So I just sort of try to keep it consistent. I'm just saying specifically with wedges, if anything, they might be, a, say, a half degree. A smidgen flat. Just a smidgen, just because, you know, the worst shot with the wedge is that, that heel grab that goes left, yeah, shuts the face down, it goes yeah. too far. You know, you seem to never get in trouble if it comes out a little, maybe softer and to the right. You know, the ones you get in trouble with is that pull that goes too far. So you've both got your favorite wedge of choice now. Let's uh, see who can get the closest out of the next three balls. Okay. Need that towel off you there, For Trotty. all of the, <clears throat> all the prizes here. All the marbles. What is the prize? Does it mean one of us can dunk you again? No, the dunk is out of the question. Okay. I was looking for a prop, but maybe you get some Hershey's chocolate or something. That's all we've got hanging around. Huh? Cadbury so chocolate, Trotty. What do you mean Hershey's chocolate? <laughs> Cadbury's down in well. We went with red zone, so I was trying to keep it Americanized for us. Sorry, that just, I just hit one pretty, pretty close. How's this? That's pretty good. How many of you hit two? Towards it. One. That's nice there. Picked it. It's yeah. going right. Yeah, four feet right. The other one's four feet left. Next one might be in the bucket. But the distance was perfect on the last two. So that's what I'm looking for. Because then if your distance is good, you can be, you know, eight, nine feet. You know, eight feet yeah. left, eight feet right. Yeah. But you still got an eight footer if you have yeah, yeah, distance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All about hitting the distance, being consistent. Nice. Real nice. Soup shot. Yep. That one might be a hair closer. Who's closest out the two of you at the moment? Don't know. Hard to tell with half the driving range down yeah. there. <laughs> There's a lot of ball marks we've got to repair. No there. joke, yeah. Not fancy in that job. No. We could hit at the same time and see. Yeah, go on. All right. Hold on, I gotta get up. Yeah, yeah. I'm, re I'm about ready. You call it. All right. One, two, three, go. Oh, I pushed mine a little. Mine looks pretty good. Yeah, you got me on that one. Right distance, I just. Oh, Rory. There you yeah. go, thanks. Dairy milk? <laughs> it might take, cost me a bit to get it here from England, but yeah. <laughs>